Hey my friends, Dr. Groovy, Scott Grove of GroovyMusicLessons.com I'm here today to show you something that I've shown you before in passing and a lot of you probably know this already and that's great. A lot of people don't. So it's the beginners that come around more looking for content than the pros. The pros know it all. <laughs> and some of them are kind enough to help you out. Okay, with that said, what I'm going to show you today is on one of the coolest guitars that everybody from every genre really takes to and likes, which is this thing, which is about the only relict guitar I own, and also wearing my strap that one of my online buddies here on YouTube made for me. And of course, yeah, it looks like a, the 52 Tele kind of thing, and I'll tell you a quick thing on there. It says Groovy. <laughs> this was made by RS Guitar Works, and was the one and only guitar that actually made them almost a family name. I definitely changed some things about it. I'll let you in on that, because it won't take much of the time. Um, they don't make this anymore. It was called the TV. T-E-E-V-E-E. -E -E -E. And they got rid of it. Why? Um, I would say just pure moronism. I'm going to try to plug in some electricity here. Because I see a battery light on and I just flat forgot to plug this son bitch in. <laughs> Let's see if I can do it upside down. My wife would be impressed. Then again, we're both getting up in age and couldn't give a shit, so... Can I find the hole? Can I? One time in my life, can I find the hole? I gotta look for it these days. I can't even find it by feeling. Oh, it's probably because it goes the other way. There you go. I put it in the... I had it upside down. That's a trick. Okay. Anyway, so this originally came with one of those, um... Goofy ass... I can't remember who makes the horrible stuff. I know who makes a lot of the horrible stuff. Um, anyway, it had one of those typical Tele ashtray bridges on it with the compensated saddles and stuff. Um, Callahan, that's what it was. And it had a Seymour Duncan in here. That had to go right away because I hate Seymour Duncan, the man, and the pickups. And it had a P90 Duncan here. Nothing here at all, just three-way switch like a telly. So, I actually just put the uh, pickups out of a, um, like a Nashville telly in here and made the pet garden, tossed it in and made it my way so I could like intonate the thing for real and so forth. Um, the reason I got uh, such a shitter against Seymour Duncan is because he's one of those guys that will also tell you about the whole tone wood thing and uh, he's also just a dick. But, and plus his pickups just sound bad. I think most people play his pickups because they hear other people think they're supposed to sound good. So it's the placebo effect. Um, you can think whatever you want, but, um, whatever. You can think what you want. You have a mind, I guess. <laughs> um, but he will actually tell you and deceive you into, especially these other line of pickups, where he has pickups that sound especially good for mahogany body guitars, for guitars that are actually made of poplar, for guitars where the body is this, and even fingerboards. If you have a rosewood or an ebony or even species of rosewood, Indian rosewood, or <laughs> he honestly puts out different pickups, that will sound better with different guitar combinations with the wood here and the wood here matching up, then this pickup would sound better. Bullshit, Mr. Duncan. Suck my hole. <laughs> the guy's a total tool. Anyway, so what I'm here for is, yeah, uh, give you some of these um, string bending things that a lot of people have gotten by accident or purpose, and I will show you how to get those or how to um, use them better and in ways that you haven't thought about. This would be typical stuff. Uh, stuff like this. OK, 
okay? Because you'll hear people getting all this. Freebird. <laughs> or. But when you go to grab that, you can grab easily the note under it, which is great. The string above it, the G. And that's a groovy thing because it's right there. So grab them both together and unite them. But make sure you um, come back to the single note before you resolve your lick. It just simply sounds better. Um, and it's good to teach how to get out of it without sounding like a train wreck that suddenly straightened out. Okay, because you got in G. Okay, so it's like cool to get rid of that other string that you picked up on the way, which in that case was the G string. And now you'll notice what I'm doing is straddling for those that don't know. Okay, we're at the 12th fret for the G. Now I'm actually going to the 13th on the B string. I keep one in the wings back here at the 11th fret for simple stability and strength to help me push the string up. And then I can always do pull-offs anytime that it's there. Okay, so that's just kind of a cool thing to um, notice as well. Keep that in the wings, let it help you push things up so you don't tire your fingers out so quick. Okay. That's another cool one which has nothing to do with the lesson. It is just simply doing the same thing but going up an octave. We have then and when you go up there it's the same idea as but you're actually reaching your note. So now you can actually grab the B string and bring it along with you at some point. And then make sure you hit your E string that is doing the G note every now and then by itself, therefore creating, you know, that you still know where you're playing. back and freak them out and go to the one below. It's not really a freak out, but it is a thing, okay? <laughs> so, again, from doing this, and again, this is straddling the note that's on the G string. You can also put your pinky on the 13th fret with your ring finger on the high E string. Listen to the background noises, okay? It's just a sonic thing that happens. There'll be a physical thing that happens in a minute that I can explain to you. This one is just a weird sonic ghost thing <laughs> in that we don't know why it works. I'm sure somebody can tell you why it does, but even though we're keeping the F note where it's at and only bending the C note doing that all of a sudden this note in the background starts going down I'm only I'm keeping one where it's at I'm bending one up yet there's this weird note in the background that is going down how that happens, no idea, um, but it's there. There you heard it. I'll do it again the same volume. Yes, right about that there. 
Ooh, in that range. <laughs> Now there are other ones that are done physically and that's when you actually grab two strings and bend them beyond where they should go and you know you have a chance of breaking them but you like to go there anyway and you will hear one note past the other and one note that is being bent up for some reason passes the other string and again sounds like one's coming down but let's do this one. But we're going to do it. Uh, let's do this. Um, it's, since it's the one that does it. But when you're going. And then you grab that G string. Did you hear the note going down? They're both going up. But we pick up another one that's going down. And there is physically not one going down. Okay, so if you want that effect. Hear that? One went down. Okay, so if you notice that kind of stuff's there, you can get right in that sweet spot where the ghost is at. It goes right there. And it continues to go down, but both of them keep going up and other ghosts join you. phenomena but we are actually picking up the G note finally within these two strings being bent again they are on the same fret and okay. big ace friendly note that you can do a um, very staccato other note is so the down note is a ghost note and you when you pick up you let that one be heard That's who I got all this stuff from. Again, you hear it there? And noticing that the G and then the fifth above it um, are both in the key of G. Sounds like a um, Jeopardy. out but we can do it there and our ghost will join us um, on this same thing there goes that ghost going downward um, you can let, let go of the high E string and go up to the D and let it take over and it is perfectly fine you can always have a fifth and stay there instead of the root and it is extremely as valid as the root note Right there, I put my pinky to shut up the high E string. I'm still 
still hitting both strings, but I just shut up the one I don't want to hear. <laughs> you can add the D string in with it. So that's where I was talking about getting up to the point of breaking. You can add, so you got the B, you pick up the G along the way, and then you go up there and add the D string with it. Now, we notice that we go into Okay, the Aerosmith kind of thing. And they actually do bend in tune if you do it here. Okay, and again, B string picks up the G string, picks up the D string, and now when you bend it up, they will actually form a chord when you bend it up enough. off with all that, get them all together. So, there's another cool look for you. Okay, so that's basically it. It's just to um, get those things in your head, under control, Listen for those weird ghost notes that are bending downward and use those because if you ever go to record, people will wonder where the hell that, how you did it, where it came from, who's doing it, and you tell them you're doing it all at once and they won't believe you, and you tell them I'm only going. Or here. And a note's going down. They're like, what the hell? Hear that one going down? And they're both going up. Just weird, goofy crap. And hey, weird, goofy crap is fun. Um, these are noises. They are just that. But it's um, these noises that have made a lot of solos very famous. And a lot of these happen by accident. Your fingers just get caught between the strings. And that becomes a new thing because it sounded cool. Some of the greatest things are mistakes. I'm not, I think my sister was a mistake. I know I was bland. Had to be. Had to be. It's in the stars. <laughs> so you guys be groovy. Scott Grove, Dr. Groovy here, trying to come up with um, explanations on some of the weird, outlandish, goofy stuff that has been recorded over the years or that I've come up with or to explain the odd parts that maybe some of you aren't hearing. Again, the beginners that don't know how to do these things and then again, those who are mo more proficient that need a little um, extra kick in the pants to hear some things that they normally aren't hearing and might apply this to something. And again, in a recording, you'll pay more attention to getting that note going down because if you ever become actually famous and people scrutinize your solos, that is one little trick that um, guitarists are going to wonder how it happened. And again, nothing is going down other than whoever's down there. Um, other than the ghost. We don't, I don't know why. If you do, hey, tell me. And it's, it's got to be a physics thing, a magnetic thing, a, um, I don't flip and know either thing. So <laughs> no matter what it is, I hope you got something out of all this mess. All this stuff applies anywhere on the neck, of course. But that's what I have to show you for this 20 minute thing. <laughs> be groovy, play loud, play often, and don't forget, uh, Screw Seymour Duncan. <laughs> Much better pickups out there and not such a flippin' moron and snake oil salesman than that guy. 
okay? Um, I'd rather have VD than SD pickups, okay? Later, kids. Bye. <laughs>